are a perfect mission statement for anyone who, like me, has had the honor to play a part in the formation of public policy. We are there to bear witness to the truth. We are not there to impose any ideology, whether free market or anti-free market, whether communist or libertarian, on the truth. The truth is the truth, whether you or I or anyone believe it or not. And here is why the truth matters. It was all very well for jesting Pilate to ask that question and then not to tarry for an answer. But that question that he asked, what is the truth, is the question which underlies every other question. It is the only question in the end that really matters. When you ask a question, you are really asking, what is the truth about the matter I'm asking you about? And we are now going to see why it matters morally, socially, and politically, as well as economically and scientifically, that the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth should inform public policy on this question. Now, 40 years ago, DDT, the only effective agent against the malaria mosquito, was banned. And you saw in that film what the effect of that ban was. Before the ban, the inventor of DDT got the Nobel Prize because he had saved more lives than anyone else in the history of the planet. Malaria, one of the greatest killers of children in the third world, had all but been eradicated. There were still 50,000 deaths per year. But when DDT was banned, by exactly the same faction that is now trying to tell us we must close down five-sixths of the United States economy, that figure is actually in the Waxman-Markey bill, that same faction banned DDT worldwide. The consequences on the slide there. The number of deaths went up from 50,000 a year to a million a year and stayed there for 40 years. 40 million people, nearly all of them children, died of malaria solely and simply because DDT had been banned for no good scientific reason or environmental reason whatsoever. And it was only after every single one of the people responsible for that dismal, murderous decision had retired or died that on September the 15th, 2006, Dr. Arata Kochi of the World Health Organization said, normally in this field, science comes second and politics comes first. But we will now take a stand on the science and the data. And he ended that ban on DDT and made it once again the front line of defense against the malaria mosquito, after pressure from me among others. But the left, the environmental left, the intolerant, communistic, narrow-minded faction, that does not care how many children it kills, is campaigning once again for DDT to be banned. Because they do not want children to be born in the third world. They want as much of humanity as possible, it sometimes seems to me, to be wiped off the face of the planet. And there is a better way to control population than to withdraw the one effective agent against one of the world's biggest killers. And that is to raise the standard of living of the poorest. That has long been a moral imperative. Since the time of our blessed Lord himself, it has been a moral imperative. That we help our lords the sick and our lords the poor. And we work for them. And we raise them up. And we make them healthy. And we make them wealthy. Because if we make them wealthy, then their populations will stabilize. This is something that every demographer knows perfectly well. Make the population wealthy and it stabilizes. Keep it poor and it will continue to increase. Make it poor if it was wealthy and it will start to increase again. And if the environmental left were really serious 
about saving the planet from a huge CO2 footprint, which as I shall show you doesn't matter at all, then the first thing they would do is pursue policies that would not, as the extinction of five-sixths of your economy would do, make you poor. But they would be trying to make everybody rich. Here is another catastrophic decision taken by the same faction, and that was when HIV first appeared, your specialists at the US Army Medical Research Institute for Infectious Diseases, US AMRIAD, recommended to the Surgeon General, privately, for they were not allowed to make public recommendations, that HIV, a new, fatal, incurable infection, should be treated just like any other fatal, incurable infection, and everybody who got it should be identified and isolated immediately, compulsorily, and permanently, but of course, humanely. That policy advice was rejected under pressure from various, once again, factions of the left who did not care how many people died, and the result is on the screen there. Since that time, 25 million dead, most of whom need not have died if that policy had been followed, as it had with smallpox and other diseases that are fatal. Smallpox now eradicated, but AIDS not eradicated. No cure in sight, and 40 million people that we know of, and heaven knows how many that we don't, infected and doomed to waste away and die. And in third world countries, that is a big deal. Sub-Saharan Africa, 7.5% of the population infected. All because, once again, the decision recommended by the sound scientists who had actually studied the effect of the disease on the population was not taken. Instead, a decision was taken that had nothing to do with the science. It was a political decision, it was a wrong decision, and it murdered tens of millions. That's why it matters to get the policy right. Here, let's take it down now from the millions just to one person. This lady, pictured by Reuters, contracted HIV from her husband. She passed it on to two previous boys who died. The boy you see here, visibly sick at her breast, died a month after this photograph was taken. She died a year later. That's what it means if policymakers are careless or reckless or they pursue political agendas without regard to the cost, sometimes for people in faraway lands of whom we know too little. People who depend utterly upon us to get these decisions right. The responsibility of policymakers, therefore, is an honorable but also an onerous one. It is for us to get these decisions right. And that is why I am here today, because I want now to talk through with you how we get the science and the economics of this global warming scare right for good and all. So that those few of you who still at the moment think we do have a problem, and I entirely respect your opinion and understand where you're coming from in view of the way the media and the politicians and quite a few scientists have misled you, I'm going to show you how you can find out and work out the truth for yourselves, for the truth alone is worthy of our entire devotion. Here is what happens if we get it wrong. This is what is already happening in third world countries all over the world because we decided that global warming was a problem. We decided to take one third of the agricultural land of the US out of growing food for people who need it and instead we devoted it to growing biofuels for clunkers that didn't. And the effect has been the doubling of world food prices in just two years, according to the World Health Organization, and also according to the World Bank, which has done a survey to explain this sudden jump in world food prices. Now for us, paying two dollars instead of one for a burger is an inconvenience. For the people in Haiti, like the gentleman you see here, who are living at the moment on mud pies made with real mud, they were paying three cents each for those mud pies, and those mud pies were just about keeping them alive. 
the price of wealth